I, get, I will say that I will actually be very brief. The, the significance for the eyes on the prize clip f for me uh, as someone who grew up here in Denver, uh, was part of the, some would say it was a successful experiment, some would say it was a miserable failure that was court ordered desegregation. Um, but who up until two years ago spent the last 25 years on the eastern seaboard basically. One of the things that the clip reminds me is that when individuals who are seen as leadership figures, as was Mr. Medgar Evers, um, are, 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 are struck down, when that happens in our recent lives, there's a sense of absolute paralysis, oftentimes. Yet, yet I would argue that when you look at the clip when you think of so many individuals, well-known, much lesser known, when they fall by the wayside, there was often no hesitation whatsoever, even in the face of brutal terror, no hesitation whatsoever to pick up the mantle and to continue forward because there was some, such a sense, even with powerful, charismatic, courageous leaders, that this truly was a collective community moment. And one of the things that concerns me as we move from 1963 to 2013, which is why I was really encouraged by what, what, what you said, is that sometimes I think we lose sight of that collective community moment waiting for that leader to come on the scene. There is a great temptation in us to keep looking to see who will lead us to be and do the things we know need to be done. And I am so grateful for that beloved poet sister, June Jordan, mm. who kept reminding us in her poetry, we are the ones we've been waiting for. And I feel that about tonight. And I feel that about this series that Donnie and the museum have put together. When I looked at the eyes on the prize sequence, I realized that I knew many of those folks there. Mm. And something came to my mind from a gathering someone like this 20, maybe 25 years ago when we were again talking about the freedom movement. And fortunately, the people who had organized this conference in Chicago had invited a number of high school students from the local schools to come and be a part of the gathering. And at break time, after some of us who had been in the South at that time had told some of our stories. At break time, a young high school girl came up to a few of us who were standing together and in the wonderful honesty of youth, she said, you were there then? <laughs> and you still alive? <laughs> I said, I hope so, sweetheart. I, do. I am glad to be here tonight because I recently heard, well, actually read something that was written to me and that I want to pass on to you as a way of understanding the power and significance of tonight and the other tonight's that will be a part of this uh, forward series. 
a dear friend of mine who happened to be the first black mayor of Berkeley, California, wrote a letter to some of us. And in, in his letter, he said this, remember, this great experiment, this great American experiment in multiracial, multireligious, multiethnic democracy, this experiment is still in the laboratory. <clears throat> and that has stayed in my mind. And I want to ask you to take it and work with it in your mind and spirit and heart. Because what I hear him saying is, America is not a given. America is not a completed work that we have to defend from terrorists. We could talk about terrorists mm -hmm. just on that screen for mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. But America is still in the laboratory. We are still trying to figure out what it means to live and work together and share together across lines that have sometimes been deadly lines. And now we want them to be opening doors. And the question is, are we ready to stay in the laboratory as citizens, as we the people? And as Donnie was saying earlier, and wrestle with each other and try to figure out with each other, how do we become the America that we could become? We are not in a position to say we have done something and now we can bomb the rest of the world into what we have done. We are still in the laboratory. Every conversation like this is part of the work of the laboratory. I want to encourage us to be willing to do the work of the laboratory and to encourage our children to know that that work is their work, just as it's our work. And Thurgood said at one point, can you imagine those slave holders and slave owners and slave traders were talking about founding a democracy? And then he would never stop there. <laughs> and then he said, they didn't know anything about founding a democracy. <laughs> but we do. And every generation has to put itself to the task that those founders could never do. I want you, even though you don't swear, some of you, I want you to promise deeply that you will not just complain about what America is not, and you will not just wait for Barack Obama to create what needs to be, 
but that you, like Brother Langston, will say, I swear this oath, America, you will be, and I'm not going to give up until you do. What grammar? I'm not going to give up until you do be. <laughs>